All right, let's do more uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons. If you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for clicking. Hope you've been enjoying this so far. It is Sunday morning. So, I did this because later I'll be doing um, story games. So, time will be spent on those. But I got a villager to look for. Thanks to everyone's loyal patronage. Business at Nook's Cranny is booming. It's going so well the ship has outgrown its current footprint. The remodel is in the works. Okay. Bits for all to rock it. So, hang on, she hasn't moved out yet. It should probably look this up. I mean, at the very least, I have an incline. minimum incline. <laughs> right, I still have all this bait. Jeez. storage now again. <laughs> okay. This is how this was always going to start today. bag. Okay, this one's good. I can get on board with that one. And then there's this whole wall of just... Check when I can look for new villager. I'm fairly certain it's today, but it might not be. If it's not, well, I'll just look to pay off part of the house, I guess. Oh, yeah, there's pants up here. had to hang clothing in random spots because I ran out of room. Twenty-four hour stream one Hey Messiah. Uh I haven't done those in a very long time. I don't know. I don't see them being worth it.
Unless it's for like a super special occasion, like I don't know if I was to do a charity thing one day, but... The times I did them, they kind of went this way, is you have people around, and then because of time zones, there's like a period of a few hours where it's pretty much dead, and then it just gets really rough. I think the better thing is to just, instead of having a 24 hour stream, just go get some sleep <laughs> and then get back up in, in like five to six hours. Then the stream can go for a pretty long amount of time and you feel fine. Just thinking Twitch was broken when you saw that I'm live. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try and at the very least do something around this time on the weekends because since the American time zone is gonna shift even more, it just means the time zone difference is, is worse in the evenings. So I guess I'm trying to acclimate myself to getting up, having something to eat, and then doing something for a few hours. Oh yeah, right, you're here. No thanks, I'm good. I know how it works. I'm doing this purely just to get the, the ant. Wait, really? Uh, hang on. I think this might be an expensive buy price. Um, New Horizons. I'm pretty sure it should be under 100. Buy price will always be between 90 to 100. Yeah, thought so. This is the most expensive. A good buy price is like 90 to 100. 110 is too expensive. Oh, that's fine. I'm in no rush to do that. Hey, you got you got the cozy stream now instead of the stress fest. <laughs> Admittedly, I was expecting the last of us to be more stressful. It wasn't too bad. It's not constant. I was expecting it to be more, I guess, like Resident Evil. But it actually has quite a bit of downtime. Like you, it lets you breathe. So, I don't mind it so far. It's like a roller coaster. Yeah, a bit like that. I think the only super tense moment was when I came across that bloater thing. Outside of that, eh, that was fine. I just need to get used to shooting. I just don't play many games that have shooting on console. <laughs> the bat scene was intense. Yeah. I mean, I think that game does a good job in giving tension because swapping weapons, it's not instant. Like, it's not as quick as this. There's, there's wind up to it. So that was taking me a bit of time to get used to it properly. 
At the start, it was just- it was a hot mess. I was doing so badly. I was a little worried there for a while. <laughs> I might not play this game well, but... It's fine. It, it, it worked out. I did great. Were you watching from the start? Wait, have I already caught this? Apparently I have. One of the tutorial fights are just messed up so badly. Ooh, these are ready. I'm not sure whatever happened was just an entertainment element. Thank you for saying that, but it certainly wasn't. I, I I just sucked. It was it was embarrassing. Because not to try and justify it completely, but I guess I was treating it more like an action game where there's like a sprint. So I was kind of playing it in that manner and then, you know, my character would just grab onto a ledge instead of running and yeah, it just Pretty much the character that I was with carried the fight. <laughs> I did not win that fight. The, the, uh, the NPC won the fight. I had very little involvement in it. But then later I got some good shots with the bow, so that made up for it. My archery skills made up for it. Just <laughs> yeah, it was pretty embarrassing. Oh yeah, right, you need, um, not sticks, you need hardwood for a shovel. Oh wait, no, it's an axe. Stone. And then wood. How was the uh, rest of your day, Messiah? You got anything on? Or just gonna chill? I can make a scarecrow right now. Involves, hang on, where is it? Wood. Cool. I can, uh, I can replace the Statue of Liberty, which was my scarecrow. smashed out your teeth today. Shit, what'd you do? Or what happened? It's really strange that uh, when you place an item down, it faces you, but not the camera. That's something that I wish was the other way around. I always have to turn objects around as a result. I mean, I guess sometimes it makes sense, like if you're putting a dresser down. 
How's your day going, Bow Wow? I try to be a good listener. You can talk to me anytime, Bow Wow. Oh, that's so nice. Cleaning up and climbing up on very unstable things and falling down. <laughs> Shit. done a few of those in my time. Not necessarily for cleaning up, but definitely climbing things I should not be climbing. Just saying what it was. Buy some clothing. So, I mean, I guess when you fell down, you must have hit your jaw or something instead. <laughs> That's the only thing I can picture. If you almost took out your teeth, it would be some nasty fall you hit your jaw or something. Um, I guess I'll do this after the museum. There's no rush. I need to go back and get the, uh... The bamboo stuff. find one more fossil. Since I skipped yesterday. Hit a very heavy and solid wood table. Oh. Yeah, that'll do it. If it's a if it's a proper wooden table, those things are very, very dense. Still alive. Oh, well, yeah.
By the way, will I never be able to stream RimWorld because of the ban or... Uh, I purchased RimWorld before it was banned. I have played it a couple of times on stream. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so I haven't done more of it. It just goes to shit very quickly. Like, I just went to check it out, pretty much. I don't go too deep into it. The ban is just, like, a purchase thing. It's not that we can't have a copy. Like, if you've acquired a copy of the game, it's fine. Okay, let's learn one. A Jeremiah? I thought I'd lay my eyes upon such a well-preserved Jeremiah. Okay. Ah yes, Jeremiah. One of the first mammals and one of the few to live alongside the dinosaurs. In order to hide from such larger dinosaurs, it was less than four inches long and quite unobtrusive. Some even theorized that these mammals were nocturnal until the dinosaurs went extinct. They needed every advantage to live among those behemoths. They were nocturnal before it was cool. There's a chance I could do a stream of it in the future. Uh, maybe. It's one of those things that if enough people mention the game, then sure, but... Oh, man, there's just too much shit coming out in the next couple of months. Maybe it's not a no. No, it's not a no. I did enjoy the game, I'm just not good at it. An Anomalocaris? Jeez. Anomalocaris lived in the water long before dinosaurs and are known for their distinctive look. Flat bodies over three feet in length, bulging eyes like a dragonfly, antennae like a shrimp tail. They looked so peculiar that people originally thought there were multiple fossils stacked on top of each other. It, oh, it's a delightful note, it means abnormal shrimp. Obviously this animal has certain reputation in the scientific community. Like those kind of games, I kind of treat them in the same vein of ry rhythm games. It's... I can enjoy them, but I just... I, I suck at them. I, I just... I suck at them. So bad. Any game where I have to keep control or keep track of multiple things just in a almost real-time environment, it sucks. I just can't do it properly. I always struggle. No, okay. I'm trying to complete one fossil or two to put outside here to decorate the museum, so I'm just leaving the dinosaurs that are uh, interesting, or at least pretty stereotypical. It's like um the game Dwarf Fortress as well. Like I. I have interest in that game. Yeah, it's similar to RimWorld. But I played it once and I thought I was doing okay and then it's it's amazing how quickly it went from oh I'm doing okay to oh no everyone's dead. <laughs> Just That's what happens in those games with me. Like, all of a sudden, everyone's just dead. It's 
kind of the same with Pikmin. I had a few levels where just things went bad. Dwarf Fortress is pretty hardcore. That's just... There's a lot of strategies to making sure they survive. It's, it's the kind of thing where... Ultimately, your fortress is gonna fall. It's just you need to do your best to prolong that, I guess. Um, there's something about sports stuff here. Could wear a, could wear a wig. Magic Academy hood. Oh, that's what that is. I guess if I was to dress up as like a bootleg Link. <laughs> Not cowboy boots. Although, I, I mean, I guess. Just to vary it up, why not? I just need a sword and shield now. Hey, um, it's great you're such a loyal cu customer. Got a ton of work. That's fine. She will warm up probably one more day of talking to her. all the rest of the stuff. I need to look up if I can look for a new villager or not. Oh, that's a doll. This is no time to sit back and relax. We've got bigger things in mind. We're expanding the shop again. This might be a bit sudden, but we're closed tomorrow. Okay, so I'm not playing this tomorrow. the BRB contribution work. Um, you just tell me what you want added as a BRB message. But people try to make it fit in with, like, the rest of them. And then I just add it in. That's it. Provided it's fine. <laughs> like, if it's something that I'm like, mm, mm, no, then I'll refund the points and not add it. Like, obviously, I'm not going to put something up that could get me into shit. And then if you want your uh, name credited to it, it'll get added as well. There's a few there already. And then, yeah, it's just, it's added to the, uh, rotation, because it picks the messages randomly, so. I 
Okay, well, let me just look this up. You can search for a new villager on the day that the former resident is fully moved out and the lot reverts to empty. It's not filled with at random immediately. Um... Villager is moving out. When can I look for one? So it might not be today then. As soon as the plot is empty, so the day after they move out. Yeah, okay. That's unfortunate. Well, in that case, I'm just going to set up the incline and do a couple of money-making things. Get through that eventually. Replacement doors. Yeah, I'll get to that later. Um. Let's get another incline so then that's done. About bridges and inclines. Incline. middle option. Then I, I don't have to worry about these for a while. Just want more music for the house. <laughs> this time I won't forget to take down the ladder first. I think this butterfly is actually worth a bit. There we go. I'm just gonna set it up here. of this. Please do not have a wasp nest. Oh, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> Shit. Okay, I need to go make a new axe. Of all the times for this to break, I'm going to put the ladder here. Because I'm lazy. Oh, right, and yeah, because it's uh, 
That's a wood cutting axe I need to actually get. Iron out. Flimsy's not gonna suffice. wood. Glass house looks different. Shit, it didn't update the title. Thank you. Tr Twitch has had really annoying things with this lately. It does this thing where I type the game into the box and then it does this loading thing. And sometimes it just freezes there. So then I have to refresh the page, I go do it again, I type the game in, it, it pops up. It looks like, cool, I've selected it, I click done, and then sometimes it just doesn't change it. Ugh. That happens to me so often. I don't know if it's like an internet connection thing or if it's just Twitch. I doubt it's internet connection. Imagine if Last of Us did an Animal Crossing crossover. <laughs> Be, I guess, a survival island, I don't know. I didn't notice it sooner. I'm usually pretty good with it. But maybe the the morning coffee hasn't kicked in yet. the topic of like you know something that sounds kind of cursed like animal crossing crossing over the last of us so winnie the pooh entered public domain recently and um you know more and more insane shit comes out with that character so they had that horror movie where they had winnie the pooh you know just be effectively like just a killer. <laughs> it's called Blood and Honey. So, there's a game that I saw a trailer for. I don't know if it's real or if it's a joke. But... The plot of it is Winnie the Pooh gets stuck like he usually does, but then gets infected by some virus. And so you control the virus and cause... Cause it to mutate Winnie the Pooh. So Winnie the Pooh starts growing these limbs. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, you know, horrific and stupid, but like... I guess it's just taking advantage of the fact that this is this used to be a Disney character. And so they're just putting it in the worst possible light. The reason I, I think it... I don't know. It might not be real is just because of how just insane it is. And then I guess it's like... Um, oh, what's the name of the game? There's a game where you you play as, I guess, this sort of um, alien creature that's a bit of a parasite. And you just have to take out a space station. So, in those movies where there's that alien creature that kills everyone, you're playing the alien creature. 
that's what that, that game is about. So this is, I guess, that, but with Winnie the Pooh. Damn it. I enjoy horror movies. Uh, not particularly. They're not my thing. But if I'm going to watch one, I'd rather watch one where... It's not like modern horror where they just try to gross you out instead of scaring you. I like horror movies that leave stuff to the imagination. Like, not necessarily show the thing that's happening or maybe the thing that's pursuing you. It's more of a leave it up to your imagination sort of thing. I appreciate that. But when it's a thing where it's just, you know, super gory and it's just a matter of just making you feel disgusted or grossed out, it's like, eh. That's, I don't know. That's not really scary. That's just making you feel disgusted. At least that's, that's how I feel about it. Those kind of movies. That's one of those things that I won't voluntarily watch unless... Someone really wants to watch that movie. Alright, well that's done. Okay, I'm gonna see what the hot item is, because that might be a way to make money today. Butter churner. What's that made out of? Can't handle jump scares, you'd pee yourself. <laughs> but see, jump scares kind of falls into that category sometimes. Lots of churn. Do I have that? I usually pick something you have. Oh, that. It's just wood and... Mm, okay, that might be worth doing. Splatter movies are just disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, apparently I already know the recipe. It's like, okay, the, what I'm playing is the last of, in The Last of Us. That's the kind of horror movie that I would enjoy. It's just... It's not... It's not completely over the top. It has its moments. But it's not this constant thing. I'll finally put this away because I have space. Okay, um... I have plenty of wood, so let's... Let's see what we can do here. The mushroom heads are disgusting too. I suppose because it's a game I don't find it too bad, but I can see why. But I mean, there are other, mov other movie genres that do disgusting things, like... Sometimes in comedy, they do gross out humor. I think you can gross someone out tactfully. And it's fine. It's just when it's a crutch and they rely on it too much. That's when... Yeah. There it is. I 
I see it as like the same way I see swearing, right? It's like, if you swear too much, it's annoying. But if you use that as a point of emphasis, it can make something have a little more impact. And that's how I see like gross outs or jump scares, that sort of thing. When used in a correct manner to, I guess, become like a set piece or just a way to end something, that's fine. It's just when it's just over-reliance on it and it's just happen happening constantly. It's in the same vein as just someone swearing for the sake of swearing. Mad money on butter churners. <laughs> I was playing Sea of Stars yesterday, and uh, well, I guess t shit. Yesterday for me, but I guess it's today for some of you. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's for me. It's a whole new day. I guess that's why it's weird, huh? Now that I think about it, it's, you would have seen me go live and then, hey, it's the same day and I'm live again. Um, but anyway, there's a cooking aspect to it and when I was able to pick the quantity and just press and hold the button to craft said quantity, I just thought about Animal Crossing and I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm going to play Animal Crossing again. I'm going to have to sit through multiple crafting screens. Is it good? Oh, I'm really enjoying Sea of Stars. It's great. The pixel art is just so nice looking. And it's based off a lot of uh, RPGs that I enjoy. Like, it has Chrono Trigger vibes. It has Final Fantasy vibes. It has Secret of Mana vibes. Through the visual design and the soundtracks, it's, it's really good. And the combat's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying the combat. Like, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's fun enough. So, so far, excellent game. I'm from the future. Yeah, just wait until New Year's. Am I going to play it again or is it already done? Uh, I'm playing it again today. And by today, I mean tomorrow for you. <laughs> yes, tomorrow for you. It'll probably be the thing I play first up. Um. Okay. It's not a very long game from what I've heard, but... I've got a few streams out of it. But one of my favorite things to do on New Year's because when it comes to time zones, the only time zone ahead of Australia is New Zealand. So pretty much on New Year's Day, my favorite thing to say is just no matter what you tell me on New Year's Eve, I'll always be like, oh, that's so last year. <laughs> when 2020 happened, it was just like, oh, that's so last decade. Stop living in the past. Because I'll be in a whole new year. Let's see how much this gets me and if it's worth it. Cheeky. I mean, it's a bit of a dad joke, but that's fine. Holy shit! Dude, it's a hundred 
thousand bells just from all that? Yeah, I'm doing that again. That's gonna pay off almost a third of uh, my mortgage. I'm gonna get more wood. I was not expecting it to be that much. I mean, I I was expecting maybe 20, 30,000 at most. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that again. I got plenty of wood and iron, so and I can always get more. All right, today's a good day for money making. All right, I may not be able to look for the new villager, but at least I'll make a dent in the mortgage. Probably because it involves iron. That's why it's so good as a sell item. As far as time zones go, I like the fact that Australia is in the future, but at the same time, I kind of wish it's the time zone was better. <laughs> it's just, it's not the best time zone to stream from. on who is watching. That is true. But in general, the viewer base on Twitch, the, the highest percentage is American, and then European follows. The amount of Australian audience is very limited by comparison. It's still large, but not as large. And also, I, I really don't have an Australian audience, like, there's maybe a, a couple that pop up every now and then. I can count them on one hand. But they're not as regular as, like, the Americans or the Europeans. I just, I don't know. Maybe I just don't appeal to Aussies. Am I sure about that? Uh, I say 80% sure. There was a Twitch survey that came up with demographics and like the best time to stream. Let's see. Uh, Twitch uses demographics. Countries. Twitch uses by country. So, I guess it's kind of hard because um, it says 36% are from the US. But then, the like, it doesn't lump Europe together. Hang on. Let's see if there's, like, a general US versus Europe. Oh, there we go. Um, the US has the biggest share of Twitch viewers. So, yeah, this is according to Twitch's own stats. So, Europe is pretty close, but the US is still higher. 
There we go. This isn't the best time if nobody streams. Well, the thing is, when nobody's streaming, it usually means because nobody is watching. <laughs> That's the simple explanation. Generally speaking, when there's a lot of streamers, it's because that's peak time. Peak time on Twitch is like... It starts roughly... If I read correctly, you know, the, the articles and stuff. It roughly starts six hours prior to now. And then it ends in about two hours. Give or take. That's why a lot of Australian streamers, uh, they get up at like six in the morning to stream. Because that's the window where they can catch the Europeans and the Americans are like in the middle of the day. And then, you know, the Europeans go to bed, they still have the Americans, the Americans go to bed, then they stop streaming. That's typically how it works. When I stream, it's like the middle of the night or super early morning for Americans. Europeans are getting up, and then by the time the Americans are awake again, I have to go to bed. And it's not ideal. But yeah, that's all I can commit to. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not a morning person, I just- I can't do it, I can't get up at 6 in the morning. I, I, I mean, I could, but... I would not be the most entertaining person to watch. I'd just... I'd be boring, I think. Would I do a living out of streaming if I could? For me to do that, it would have to get to the point where I'm living as comfortably as I am, or as close as comfortable as I can be. I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't want to do it if, like, let's say, you know, I can make enough from streaming where I can pay my bills. I wouldn't start it then. Because it's just like, well, I'm just surviving and it's very volatile. And if the slightest thing shifts, it becomes very stressful. I would have to get to a point where it's just like, okay. There's a high, very high likelihood that I'll be fine. That's not true, don't say that. Don't say what? What did I say? I'm not boring. Oh, no, I'd be boring if I'm just waking up. <laughs> I thought you were, like, referring to what I said about, um, the money aspect. Try, like, when I'm just waking up, and I'm trying to wake up, believe me, different personality. But thank you, <laughs> nonetheless. Golden samurai suit. S slow typing, that's no, okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the kind of thing that to do streaming full time, it's not something that I'm actively chasing, but if I see that it's possible one day, sure. But to be honest, I think what's probably the more likely thing to happen, I would have to go more into the content creation aspect and less on streaming. You have to do a lot of shit to be able to survive these days, like you can't just be a streamer. It just, it's not viable anymore. There's just too many people streaming. So you have to get into making shorts, you have to get making into YouTube content. You can't just survive being a YouTube, uh, a Twitch streamer. I'm sure there are people that do that, but I would imagine they already have a following. I think if you're new and you want to get into the streaming side of things, I think nowadays it's more involved than it used to be. That's just my observations, it's just... You have to make other content, you can't just play video games and expect something to happen.
There's a reason a lot of Twitch streamers have YouTube channels. If if Twitch was like this thing that you could survive just solely off, people wouldn't need to do YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, like any of that stuff. Building a brand and be active on many platforms to raise your awareness. Yeah, exactly that. And For me, it's just to get to that point. I guess I would wait longer, that's all. It would have to be a case where, you know, I would be able to pay my bills, but then if someone, say, wants to see a movie or go do something, or if I want to take a trip somewhere, I don't want to be like, well, I can't. Because <laughs> th there's a difference between living and surviving, you know what I mean? I wouldn't want to just be surviving on streaming money. I think then it becomes a case of just, I don't know, become stressful and the original reasons I started streaming start falling into the background and yeah, I don't know. Burnout's more likely. All you hear is many streamers are having problems with depression. It's a pretty common thing. Um, though I'm not at that level. I can definitely tell you certain things that do happen. A lot of things get inside your head when you stream. Um, like some of them being, you know, questioning your content. Because at the end of the day, shit comes down to a number whether that's view account average view account or how much money you make it, it doesn't matter it's one of those things where the gold the gold post just shifts and it keeps shifting forever you know when you start streaming you have no viewers and then that might be a bit stressful if you don't have viewers for a long time but then when you finally get your first viewer you're happy right you're happy for a while, and then maybe your audience grows a little, and then suddenly, let's say you have four viewers on average. You're, you're really happy about that. And then sometimes there might be a night where there's only one person there, and then suddenly you're really unhappy about that. Even though you were perfectly happy with the one viewer not too long ago, it's just now the four has gone down to one. And you start thinking, shit, what have I done wrong? And that's, it's one of those things that's kind of messed up when you think about it. And it's just something that happens, it's just, I don't know. It's just this chase for a higher number, always. And then there are cases where streamers have said that, you know, they feel like they can't take a day off because if they do, people, um, if they take more than one day off, there are people that just don't follow, like, they'll unfollow you if you don't stream consistently. Or, like, you know, your subscriber numbers will drop, like... Oh, man, I forgot what streamer it was that took a week off and then they talked about how many subscribers they lost in that week and followers. Like, kind of insane. And I guess if you're basing your livelihood off streaming and, you know, if that shit is really important for your survival, yeah, it can be depressing to think that you can't take a day off. There's a slew of other things that come with streaming that I, I won't get into, but... It's not, it's not easy. I'm gonna chop wood now. I 
I think it's it's a lot harder when you put a lot of your creative energy into something and like you are chasing that dream and then it, you kind of just stagnate. And it's probably through no fault of your own. It's just these days things are powered by an algorithm and just the number of people streaming is, is kind of ridiculous. There's only a, a very small percentage of streamers that actually get to that point where they can make it a career. That's, I think last time I checked the number, it's something like 95% of people that stream don't get to that point. So, yeah. Just, that's why I, I guess, I don't want to be pessimistic. That's not what I'm trying to come off as. It's more like, I don't want to be chasing it, so to speak. And more of a, if it happens, it happens, but at the moment, it just, there's no indication that, that I will get to that point where I can consider it. Just based on how long I've been doing this for, that's all. The most important thing is having fun. Yeah. And that's why I keep doing it. I do genuinely enjoy it. But, you know, as sad as it might sound, ultimately there will come a day where I'll be like, okay, well, I did streaming for a while and it's just... It never really went beyond this point and that's fine. I haven't reached that point yet, but it'll happen one day. On a more positive note, the stuff I've been doing on the other YouTube channel has been good. Like, I've only made two videos and both of them have done well. The Zelda one's done better than I expected, so I'm very grateful for that. It's giving me a bit more, more motivation to try to do more stuff like that. Only there was more time in the day. <laughs> I didn't have to mix it with full time work, but it is what it is. considered not working with other streamers yeah I mean okay I know that's what you should be doing I know that's what you should be doing it's one of those things they recommend and I think it works here's my stance on it Collaborating with other content creators works, it does, but sometimes it doesn't work as well as you would think. And I think it's a bit overrated in my opinion. They make it sound like that's the thing that everyone must do if you want to be successful, and I, I don't agree with that. I think that stuff works when, you know, you form an actual bond or a friendship, I guess, with another creator. And it feels pretty natural that, you know, you two work together. Versus just going out there and just, you kind of go in with the, well, I just want to grow my channel. Kind of mentality. I don't know how to put it, it's... In the job that I'm in, I've gone to conferences. Um, and there's a crowd that I call the LinkedIn crowd. And it's just people that kind of approach you, they ask you your job title, and then the moment they hear, like, you know, 
either you're in a position of relevance or uh, like not a junior. They just want to add you on LinkedIn. They don't really want to find anything else out about you. They're just like, oh shit, this is someone that maybe I could use one day. It's like that mentality. I don't mean to make it sound that way, but it's just that's how I just feel about LinkedIn stuff. It's just... I don't know. It feels not genuine. I don't mean to shit on anyone that uses LinkedIn. LinkedIn is fine. <laughs> it's just there are people that take LinkedIn super seriously. And I guess I just don't want to become that um, in the streaming space. You know, go to someone else and only see them as an ends to a mean as opposed to a person. Means to an end, ends to a mean, jeez. There's no creator that I'll collaborate with. Uh, no, well... Not really. I guess because I had To be honest, I haven't really made an effort to get to know someone. It's like, I work full-time, I can't really watch streams during the day. And the streams that I... I do have friends that stream. But they're, uh... When they stream, it's usually during the day. You know, it's when I, I can't stream because I'll be at work. But other than that, I mean, I don't I don't have any you know dreams of of collaborating with some larger streamer. I, I don't know. I guess I've never really thought about that. I've had people on the stream, but they're not streamers, like, you know, I play games with my moderator. Moderators. Not having a favorite creator. I have a favorite creator, but, you know. <laughs> the funny thing is, he kind of has a similar mindset when it comes to collaborations. He's just like, he's not the one to just chase them down for the sake of chasing them. Like, if he's going to play a game with someone, it's because they're a friend and he genuinely enjoys their company. And he's not seeing it as a way to grow his channel. He's just doing it because it's fun. But, you know, the, the two streamers that I follow the most, um... It's Vine Sauce, which is... His name's Vinny, but, you know, I'll just say his channel name. And Germa is like one of the largest streamers but both of them don't do the thing where you know they're collaborating for the sake of collaborating it's the people they stream with are people they've known for a while and people they've become friends with and it just when those streams happen they're great because it just feels natural it's not someone just being there to grow their channel I guess also me as a person. I mean, I'm a little... Oh, fuck. I don't think I can get this out in time. These things just move so quickly. I don't know if they give up chase or what, or if it's, like, inevitable that it's going to catch up to me. Yeah, it's just going to catch up. Ugh. It's fine. Um, what was I gonna say? I'm like, 
semi introverted I guess is what I want to say. I can be social, but at the same time, there are days where I j I'm just not that. Anyway, it's a long-winded answer. Ah, oh, jeez. I just need a little push. Eh, maybe. I think right now the best avenue I have is just looking more into the content creation aspect of things. Like, if I make YouTube videos that do as well as the one, the two that I've done, and, you know, they keep that quality, then maybe something can happen, but as far as Twitch streaming goes, I don't know. Oh, I was like, the likelihood of it happening again is very low. I'm gonna faint now. I need to use medicine. I didn't think it would get me again. Hopefully <laughs> that didn't sound too self-absorbed. Just I guess whenever I get asked stuff about streaming, it just makes me get pretty reflective. Particularly when it's along the lines of like, hey, how come you know you you do decent stuff? How come you don't have more viewers? Or hey, would you consider doing this full time? It just I start thinking about the reasons why it's not the case. I'm gonna go pay a bit of the mortgage off. If I could be at least one year financial independent, not having to go to work. I'd have to work really fucking hard to make it a reality, but yeah, that's... That's the thing, I, if I really pushed it, I could probably... I could probably take a, that leap of faith if I wanted to at some point. I'd have to seriously plan for it, like a budget perspective, but... I could do that, but I wouldn't do that without, you know... Whether it's from YouTube or whether it's from Twitch, just from a numbers perspective, that makes me go, okay, you know... If I invest in it, I can probably do it. If I can get myself believing that, then yeah, I could do... Maybe not a year, but six months at the very least, where I could give it my all, but it would have to be a strong indicator that's like, oh no, this is this is something that I should try. And I might regret it if I don't. Wait, just deposit. But as it stands right now, I just I, there's nothing at the moment that would 
make me believe that. That's all. It's not to say that it's not going to happen. It's just that's just the reality of things right now. If I'm going to if you want, I can be like completely transparent about it, but just I don't want to I don't want to make it sound like I'm comparing numbers or complaining about numbers or just have my head in numbers. It's just you have to look at that shit from time to time, especially if you're making that sort of decision. But as it stands right now, from a Twitch perspective, I don't count YouTube because I, you know, I've only started uploading videos. But from a Twitch perspective, my average viewership hasn't changed in in four years. It's just been a flat line the whole way. So the simplest thing is, you know, you show a graph, it's a flat line. You're not going to start a career on a flat line. There has to be some sort of clear, oh, there's an up, there's an uptake here, and it's a constant uptake. There's been an uptake for the last six months. So it's worth pursuing. But yeah, it's just like, you know, it's four years, same average viewer. And that's the number that really matters when it comes to like becoming a Twitch partner. So that's, that's all. Because you need to get to 75 and maintain that number for a while before you can get it. And even then, that doesn't mean you can do full-time living. It's just, that's just that milestone. How about YouTube? Well, YouTube's a bit harder. The VODs channel is just me uploading past streams, so it's not... It's not something where I'm putting any effort, really, other than making a thumbnail. So that channel doesn't count. The channel where I was doing highlights of just collections of clips, that one... Again, it kind of just flatlined. It just reached a certain point where it just didn't really get many subscribers. It just kind of stayed at a certain level and then didn't go beyond that. Each video I would upload did only get a very small amount of views. So I stopped doing them because it was just a lot of time for not a lot in return. So instead of stressing myself out, I just kind of took a step back from them. With the new channel, on the other hand, I've only done two uploads and both of them have gotten more views than anything else I've ever done on YouTube. Especially the latest one. Like, I think just from that video alone I got 60 subscribers, which is a lot, given the channel is tiny. So that one's done very, very well. And the first one I did, it, it did well as well. Just not as well. But still very good when you compare it to just, like, a highlight video or just a stream VOD. So, you know, I'm gonna... There's a couple of other videos I have planned. And we'll see how they go. I really hope we'll not lose my passion about streaming. You'd miss it. <laughs> well, thank you for saying that. I do appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's not so much losing a passion for it, it's more at a certain point. I think I gotta, like, look into my personal life a little more. I mean, right now I'm fine, but, like, I'm starting to get old. I can't imagine if this has gone, if this hasn't gone anywhere in the next couple of years, I'll be like, well... I'm approaching 40. I should probably not put that much, as much time. I'll just phrase it like that. Still a while to go, but you know, something that I'm definitely going to have on my mind as it gets closer. I 
am I talking about kids? Not necessarily kids, just, I guess... I'll just say it as next phase of life. Let's just call it that. Whatever that might be. Not to get too personal about it. Probably shake the trees up here before I hit them with the axe. I just get the feeling. <laughs> Retirement home? No. It doesn't mean that more. Ugh, like, I mean, shit. That's gonna be a reality one day. Like, that'll be an interesting one. If we're gonna end up with streamers that are still doing it at the age of fifty, but there's a potential for it. I'm sure there are already people that do that, and that's fine. It's honestly a good way to remain social still. Shaking these trees. Uh huh. So then this doesn't happen again. And these are worth money. But I mean, I think you get what I mean. It's just. Yeah. Next phase of life. For that to happen, I, I guess it just. Any sort of aspirations of this going somewhere have to be put on hold if not stopped especially if at that point i'll have almost streamed for 10 years and if, if nothing's happened at that point it probably never will so then it'll take a step back or it might be that i'm just like well I might just do other stuff. And again, it's just, it's not a complaint, it's more that's, I guess, the reality of it. Nothing lasts forever. So much more money with this. My plan doing this is being successful in a business perspective. In the super long term, sure. In the short term, right now it's for fun and I guess just I get to talk to people that I probably otherwise would have never talked with. But I guess, you know, at a certain point, If it's not making sense in that regard, then, you know, the, the thing that I would want to focus on is, is my own life. That's just it. Like, there's this other stuff that I need to get going.
Whoops. Hey, I put it away. All right, I need to shake all these trees as well, just in case there's... Surely there's not another one, but you never know. Okay, net out. Yeah, that's not gonna sell for much. Okay. Sorry if it's, like, a little vague. It's just... Uh, one thing I, I made a rule to myself about is just not to get too super personal on stream. For a multitude of reasons, but... I try to be honest where I can, but then, like... At a certain point, I, I am a little vague. As to not to overshare. all the trees on this side of the river. It's just... I don't think there's many trees left, so I'm gonna go craft now and... We'll make quite a bit of money. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about the YouTube stuff. I'm just I'm <laughs> just hoping that the rate at which I'm putting out those videos isn't too slow, but you know, I'll do my best. I think I have some that are a bit smaller in scope, so hopefully it'll be a bit a bit easier to pull them off. The Zelda one was lengthy in scope because it was something that I already had. It's not like I went about the Zelda one from the get-go. It was more like, oh, well, I played through all the Zelda games. I have the footage. I may as well do something with that footage. Can I leak something? Well, in terms of what I'm going to do, but I can talk about it. It's not like the entire subscriber base is watching <laughs> from YouTube. Um, but I mean, just loosely, because I've been playing all the Warrior games as well. I want to talk about those games. And it's just... It's not so much a ranking, it's more talking about how much I like the series and just... It's been 15 years since the last game. So... It's kind of like, I'm just going to frame it as I really missed the series, but then there are these new games that have come out that kind of take the place of Warrior Land now. Like, they're really good games, and it's almost like a new genre. Just stuff that's very similar to Warrior Land. So, that's one that I have that's... I've written up most of it, but there's still a couple of Warrior games I need to play through before I, I can finish that one. And then start putting it together. So, I think that one, it, it's similar to the Zelda one, but it's also got 
the added part of just talking about um, two games that are almost better than Warrior Land, but they take inspiration from them, so. Uh, and then another idea I have floating around that I haven't really gone too far into um, it's just there are new games that are being developed for older consoles and it's this thing that's just become more and more popular lately is just people are making games for older consoles and then they kind of re -re they release them as well on Steam but, you know, they're designed from the get-go to work on old consoles. And there's a bunch of cool new games that just work on old consoles, so... The thing that I'm trying to work with is kind of like having a regular thing. It's just pick a game that's brand new, but it's for an old console, and then just talk about it. So I'm toying around with that idea. Because there's quite a few... There's stuff coming out for the NES, the Game Boy, the Genesis. Um, I mean... There's that dude that rewrote Mario 64. So then it runs really nice. And has stuff that, like, Mario Odyssey has, so... Yeah. That's... The two that are the most solid. Um, the only other one is just... Because <laughs> I didn't technically play all the Zelda games, but... There are the, the three Zelda games that Nintendo refuses to acknowledge. The lo they're not lost Zelda games, but... Um, they're just stuff that Nintendo never talks about. So how's your campaign to get KK? Here's something else for you. Tiki Torch. Oh, cool. They're good. Thank you. That one's an interesting piece of... Oh, I already got the recipe. Those games are an interesting piece of history, but... Um, they are... They are bad games. <laughs> they do not play well. It'd be one of those things that... I'd want to play them, but I'm not entirely sure I'd be able to get through them. And I guess that's why that video is like... If I'm going to make that video, I have to make the best effort to get through those games, but... They're just very bad games. There's no other way to put it. They just suck when it comes to gameplay. I've seen people try to play through them, and it's a, it is a struggle. Hey, Sandy, how's it going? It is, yeah. If you've never seen them before, man... <laughs> There's a reason why Nintendo never talks about them.
You had a pipe burst in your basement? Oh shit. That sucks. Tube top. I don't think I need to see what that is. I know what a tube top is. to look for the new villagers today, but it's gonna have to be next time. I thought for sure they'd be moved out by today, but I guess it's tomorrow. fish I need to get still. the Neon Tetra, which is a small fish. Nah. That looks sort of like that. Sorry, it's been nothing but wood cutting, but I can't, I can't leave this opportunity to pay off a lot of the house just by making items. That is a lot of money. <laughs> hey, deliverer of items, and you're heading off, Messiah. All right, have a good sleep. Thanks for the chat as well. Appreciate it as always. I gotta look into like doing some afternoon stuff soon myself. Ah, uh, another axe. I was kind of hoping yeah to do the villager thing today but it's just not gonna happen. I'm doing all right, just starting off the Sunday. It's pretty nice outside. I'll probably go out soon. It's been miserable all week, so it'll be nice to get out for a little while. Uh, 
Um, I'll just finish the job I started. The butter churner is on the uh, hot item. It doesn't cost much to make and just it sells really well. So instead of fishing for an eternity. Oh, crap. It's okay, this time I'm safe. <laughs> Not this time. Nice try. I thought for sure I'd found all of them, but okay, well, it's fine. Oh. I guess that's it, I think. Do I hit you? No. This is probably the most wood I've cut in a while. I guess that's it. Alright. It's probably just that one over there. Um... Alright, I'm done. Now I'm done. That's every tree. We'll see how many of these I can make. If I can get another 100,000 off selling butter churners, hey. should be enough. Okay, uh, butter churner. Go, go, money. Two games of crafting last night that let me craft things on bulk. It was nice. Can I make? 
Ten? No. About thirteen. I think I need to get more iron out, but other than that. Not that I didn't want to. Sheer amount of items I've crafted lately. Between the 200 pieces of bait and then another 80. And then that other day where I was crafting pots. It's just I've done nothing but crafting. Give me the bells. Still good. I still have more to make. less to make than I thought. It's just three, but still about a hundred thousand bells made. this chair. How much is it? Yeah, that's fine. That's low cost. Honestly, pretty good, considering I didn't fish and making that amount of bells. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, Hang on. How much do I wanna pay? Okay, cool. And that leaves me about 20k. Given how much that was up to before. Okay. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to do for today. I mean, I wanted to do more, but... The gorilla hasn't moved out yet, so I can't. Probably for the best. <laughs> Alright, well, that's it for now. If you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for sticking around to the end. Hope you enjoyed, and if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is just by clicking buttons, particularly the ones that have the thumbs up on them, and it helps out a lot. Thank you to those that do do that, and if you want to watch me play something else in the meantime, just click one of the two videos that have popped up on your screen. But we'll see you next time. Bye, YouTube.